All right, on this episode of What G Paw's Doing, I'm, uh, it's kind of chilly in the, in the shop slash front room of the house here today or this morning. So, uh, I'm going to be doing a, uh, some covers from beginning to end. So, just to keep in mind that uh, this is very impromptu, and, uh, here you go. get my material and for those that have this particular brand of restaurant in your market it may look familiar like who in the heck has orange material on their seats well one of my biggest customers does and I am very thankful for the business in these challenging economic times and climate but um, then we're going to take our pattern that I have uh, here. Let's try to put my name or cover up their name. I have the pattern of the ends and the dimensions. So we're going to go with a 56 and a half long and we do 27 and 5 8 width and put a stretcher on there. I've already sewn this, or I've already cut out the stretchers. These get sewn onto the 27 so that it goes around the back side where you can't see it. So we're gonna go here. Just to confirm that we are at 55 and a quarter inch, which means we are 27 and 5 eighths. And because I'm not really good at math, even though math is my strongest subject, I want to mark it, flip it around, and we're exactly the same. So we're going to go up here. There we go. We're going to go here. And 27 5 eighths. Market. Like Yogi and Chogi for those that speak Korean. Like this and like that. And we're going to go 56 and a half. But, however, in the winter time, because the temperatures are colder, the vinyl doesn't stretch as much. So I'm going to add one quarter inch to the measurement. So, if our booth seat is 56 and a half, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to go to 56 and three quarter, which is right there. 56 and three quarter. Now, in the summertime, I use the exact measurement of 56 and a half on the long ones because anybody that knows basic physics knows that the cold contracts and the heat expands. And that's why we do that very slight adjustment in our measurement. Okay, now what did I mess up here? Now, because I am very OCD, I quadruple check all of my measurements. Okay. Because you can measure twice and cut once. As the old joke goes, I cut that thing three times and it's still too short. That's an old, jo that's an old joke that uh, Mr. Lloyd Burns told me years ago. He's the one that taught me this upholstery. He's no longer with us, but um, his legacy still stands by. So now we're going to cut this, and then we're going to sew it, and you are going to see the creation of a seat cover for a restaurant here in this anonymous market.
Now, usually I would have music playing, but because of copyright and all that other technological hoo-yah on the logarithms nowadays, I'm not going to have my, uh, my usual repertoire of music playing in the background. You guys probably would not like my music anyway, unless you're a big fan of the father of heavy metal, Mr. Ronnie James Dio. It would be blasting so loud that the dogs would want to stay outside when it's 35 degrees because of the music. But that's just how I operate. Or as my daughter would say down in Florida, that's how I roll. So. Alright, so now we have a 27 and 5 eighths width. The reason I do it this way, with a stretcher, that's what this part is, is it saves material. The vendor that provides this material to the customer, which then provides it to me, I want to save them a few yards of material because I am cognizant of the fact that they do buy the material and I want to give them a better value for that material that they purchase to accomplish this mission. Okay, we're going to back stitch and take my my piece here. here now let me zoom in on this. There's probably three or four miles of thread onto this one piece. It is hundreds and hundreds. It's so stiff from all the sewing. It's hundreds of, of different sewings on there. By doing this, what happens is it keeps the thread from tangling as you change distance or change uh, material as you feed it through the machine. It, for those that are in the know, you would understand exactly what this function serves. Alright, so we are going to put a stretcher on here. different parts inside this sewing machine that are all synchronized. can't do it at certain angles. Alright, so we cut it to length. I'm going to back up and do what is called a top seam. Now what I need to do is break out my other technological device, my iPad, I guess, and do a different camera angle, but but that's okay, because old G-Paw is not that talented. I used to be, even though I retired from Radio Shack, which is uh, a name that some of y'all might remember, some of y'all may not. They went belly up, and I got out right before that happened. And I do miss them. It fed my family for a number of years, almost 20 years it fed the family. And I do miss them. But if I was still in the shack, I would have all kinds of different camera angles and I would edit the video together so that you could see multiple window in window and eh, well, I'm over all that stuff. After a while you get burned out on that computer stuff. Now you may not be able to see it that clearly from way over there, 
but I will bring I will bring this to you so that you can see it. to the trash and get another piece like that. I wonder what I did with my thingy. I hate when I lose my thingy. Oh, there it is. It's on the end of the thing like it's supposed to be. All right, let's bring this over to you. There we go. We're gonna take this old tripod here and we're gonna move this thing and say, ooh, look at that. Uh, look at that thing right there. That's 56 and three quarter inches of straight quarter inch top seam is what that is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's set this animal back up so you can see what I'm doing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ends on it. Got a bunch of them that I've already sewn up. And uh, we're going to take two of them. They're all exactly the same because I use patterns. Now you got to visualize. Let's see if I can angle this animal down here a little bit. There you go, like that. You got to visualize that this is the back and that's the front. So this is wrong. We're going to flip it over. And what you do is you start here and then you're going to sew this way with it so that it makes the thing. We're gonna go two fingers and start right there. All right, sorry about that. Old G-Paw's getting older and uh, the doctor's got him on high blood pressure pills, so I gotta go use the restroom about every seven minutes, so I apologize. All right, now back to the task at hand. We're gonna go ahead and put this end onto this long cover here. After I change the angle, back up to there. There we go. Yeah, this getting old stuff's getting old. So remember, two fingers, and then the edge of your end. You're gonna back stitch. Trim off the excess now that I have located my thingy. one because the front side of the of the cover I use two fingers on the back side you need to line it up to the curve that is on that stretcher I know it's kind of hard to see from that distance but this is the curve 
that's the stretcher, and you're going to put it in the center of that curve. The reason for that is because when you install the cover, you're going to pull it down past that curve to make it nice and taut, and it's going to be real nice and smooth. On another video, you will see how that works. Here we go. Put it on the center. Line it up. Start sewing, do the back stitch so that the threads don't come undone, and away we go. like that. Okay, now what we have is we've got a cover with ends on it. Now what we got to do is we got to do the top seam. I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera so you can see the top seam because that's important. That's what the customer sees. That's what the client sees. So we're going to get all kinds of earthquake on here as I collapse the legs of the tripod. Stand by. I'm not good at editing this kind of stuff with the iMovie and all that stuff, so I just do it on the fly. Now, FDG, Filipino Desert Gardener, she is real good at that editing stuff, but I am not, even though I taught her how to do it. That's all right. She taught herself. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So at this point, it don't matter which one we grab. So we're just gonna start here on the back side. You're gonna make sure that this flap where you sewed it together is going opposite of the end. So you're gonna fold it. I hope you all can see it. We're gonna get it started. Go. And what I like to keep it about a quarter of an inch. That, that's a very clean measurement for me. It's easy for me to calculate. Three quarter, half, one quarter, zero, that kind of thing. Now I don't go as fast on this one. I like to make it nice and slow. And if you can look underneath here, because it tries to walk on you, it tries to fold, you gotta fold it flat so that you can make a nice solid top seam. I'm sure there's 10,000 YouTube videos out there about what a top seam in upholstery is and so on, but uh, if you need definition of it, you just go ahead and search on the interwebs exactly what you need to do to clarify what I mean by top seam. I have adjusted and fine-tuned and, and dialed in this machine over the years and now I'm very careful with it so it does not fall out of adjustment but I've got a real nice and smooth I put a new clutch on the motor and it is smooth like butter now in this case here, just a little side note, the needle is up about an eighth of an inch. Manually rotate it down into the material so when you start to move the material, it doesn't slide out of the alignment of where that needle is. see that I've got the sewing out of the way you see this line right here that's because of my OCD this tells me to stay no farther than the edge of this line so that I can have a 3 8 of an inch seam when I'm sewing it's just one of those OCD things for those that are out there in the viewing public that 
have OCD or think they might have OCD is the precision of sewing that I find very therapeutic in what grandpa does or what grandpa's doing or grandpa's doing. So let's do this other top seam here. See how the needle's down? I can yank and tug and pull and do whatever I need to do on this, and it's not going to mess up where that needle goes, because if you don't have that needle through the material and you start to sew, it'll slide, and then it's crooked, and it looks like you know what on a stick. And if you can't get it right with your foot, don't be too proud. To use your hand to move that wheel to get it to line up. Checking the fold. Getting it down in the material. I've been doing this for years. Hundreds and hundreds of covers. And I still can't get that needle to land in the down position, so I still have to turn it. Another uh, person in my uh, sewing career His name is Cactus. Cactus the leather guy. Wicked Cactus. You talk about a sewing son of a gun, that guy could sew. He's got an old ancient sewing machine and he can sew like the day is long on that thing. And he does a pumping action with his foot. He goes pump, 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 pump. And it just, it just like a half of a, a, a sewing stroke as he does it. Hundreds and hundreds of hours him pumping it like that I don't do that I still can't get it right so if I need that needle to come down I might I might tap it if my hands are full but you see how hard that is it took like three or four of them to get it down there where I can just go like this but that guy he's good so anyway so what we've got now I'm just gonna grab this here and show you all the top seam. Oh, wicked cactus. He's a good old boy. He taught me a lot about that stuff. He did a lot of leather work on my motorcycle and taught me how to do it. I'll show you that one of these days, but look at that right there. This is the end of the cover. This top seam that's on the back stretcher, that goes around the back of it. The back of the of the booth seat so this is the front this is the back and this is where the back of the seat is and you can't see it but that saves the customer a whole bunch of material but there you go let's look how straight that is oh that's sexy right there i don't care who you are all right in the next installment you'll see how i install this onto a uh, onto a seat so there you go that's what jeepa is doing